I'm just reading a job description of a senior software engineer and there is a term API design. API design right here. So if you guys don't know the term, watch this video because I'm going to explain what an API design means. Right, so we've seen on the job description the term API design, right? And I think uh, it's safe to assume you, uh, you, you hear the term API all over again, right? And maybe you still don't know what it means. So I, I prepared a little drawing to explain why, why do we need APIs and how the APIs are used. So you finally understand what a developer does and, and why, okay? So it's all about interconnectivity. It's all about interconnectivity because um, say you have a phone and the phone like this is um, pretty much useless um, after, after a few days of being offline, right? You want to download emails, you want to connect to Facebook, you want to um, play a game and then um, connect to a, a remote player, you want to, I don't know, send a, a message on WhatsApp and all this requires connectivity. So connectivity to either a database or a third-party server, some analytical tool or whatnot. So it's all about connectivity and that's the reason why we have APIs. So uh, let me demonstrate it on a, on a simple example where you go to a website. For example, this is a website where you can find a hotel. I hope you guys can see it. I'll bring it maybe a little closer. So here on this website, you can enter the destination, right? Where do you want to fly? Where do you want to travel? Then you enter check-in, check-out dates, and then you hit this uh, search button, right? So assume this is search, submit button. As soon as you hit the submit button, then something, something is triggered, right? And usually it's, it's an API that is triggered, you know, somewhere remotely, somewhere, somewhere in the cloud, there is an API, an application programming interface, you know, that's the API acronym, application programming interface. So say this is the API after you hit the submit button and the, and the API takes your input your input here is the destination, it is the check-in, check-out, you know the check-in date could be 24th of February uh, 2020 and it tries to connect to database, you know, so, so this API runs on the, on the server and it for example tries to look up to database to see if there are any hotels available uh, for this particular check-in date, check-out date and uh, destination all right so so it needs to search for this particular combination and now i i enter this date uh, in this form format you know day dot month dot year 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 which is standard for example in europe right but in the united states slightly different format is uh, um, standard so also in database the other format could be used okay so say here in the database you have a you have uh, you know thousands of hotels and thousands of combinations of check-in check-out availabilities and uh, in the check-in say this this would be the the row where you have check-in so here could be uh, for example 20 20 0 2 24 you know so so this format could be used year month and uh, date day uh, day of month you know, so the one of the easiest things the API would do is to transform the format. Okay, so it would take this and then this and then this and then, you know, change the order of it to look up in the database. And this is just the simplest form ever, you know, to change format or to trim text or to replace some uh, text um, or whatnot. Then it could do all sorts of uh, different things such as uh, connect to another um, another API. You know, an API can talk to another API. And um, the, the developer who is uh, building the API needs to know the, the you know, the, the interface, the, the standardized input and output parameters of each of these APIs so they can map them. So here, say, if, if you know that a database needs an a date 
in this format, then you know that you need to program it in a way that it you know, transposes the um, the date to different format. And uh, you could you could come up with lots of different examples how an API could connect to another API. You know, it could be some analytical solution. Uh, it could be I don't know pulling your your most recent emails, right? Uh, so you can connect to to your email server. You could connect to you know all sorts of servers. Like to, these days, there are just um, you know there's just abundance of um, of, of APIs. Uh, most of them are say even open sourced. Uh, so uh, that so that's something that can run on a server itself, and you connect. So um so so this is what you need to know about APIs. I would say right now, it, it's all about interconnectivity. The developers build the APIs so the two systems can connect with each other. A developer who builds a mobile application needs to work with the backend developer together. So, so, so the developer who builds the mobile application knows the, the attributes of the API. So he or she can adjust the form to connect with the API. I hope I hope this uh, clears out some of your questions. If not, please ask me questions and I'll try to explain it uh, in a different way, okay? So this is all about um, APIs right now, but please keep in mind there is just so much more you as a technical recruiter need to know to become really great at sourcing software developers and technical roles in general, okay? So uh, knowing the technical stuff like this is just the foundation because then you can talk to developers, uh, you can have meaningful conversations with them, right? So that's it for now folks. Please keep in mind that this is just the beginning. This is just the foundation. This is what you as a technical recruiter need to know in order to become great at sourcing, attracting, interviewing developers. This is just the basic stuff but inside the Geekerter Academy there's just so much more about how can you become a great technical recruiter.